The story of Nigerian sport in the past 64 years has been a mixed bag of bitter and sweet experiences. So many interesting moments to cherish and always reminisce. And of course, there have been some lows. And that is why I call it a bittersweet experience. And of course, when it comes to the latest experience, at the 2024 Olympics in Paris. One of those things not to remember so soon. But you know what? We will hold on to those interesting moments and hope that glory days will soon return to Nigerian sports. Hello there and welcome. This is SportsRail on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Embade Adelaide. And of course, it brings me much pleasure to welcome you to this special episode because it's the 64th independence anniversary of Nigeria. So we've got every reason to celebrate. Happy independence to Nigeria. All right. As always, we're at a normal venue. That's the Moshuda Biola National Stadium. And of course, uh, quite a busy background at the moment. On the road today, We've got loads to talk about, from Nigeria's 64th Independence Anniversary to our regular, which is the MTN Super Falcons show, and of course the Sports Tidbits, which will be you know, a compilation of trending sports stories from all over the world. We'll also update you when it comes to all the latest happenings in Nigeria, and of course abroad, right from the MPFL to all the leagues you need to talk about in Europe, and many other interesting stories coming from the world of sports. I can assure you, you're going to miss nothing. Many thanks for joining us once again. Okay, it's Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary and it will be right to begin the show with this interesting one about Nigerian sports since independence. And of course, we'll be taking a look at Nigeria's history in sports. And of course, how the country can take advantage of the abundance of sports talents for international glory. Nigeria since independence has recorded remarkable success in many sports, especially in boxing, football and athletics. These achievements saw the country become a household name in sports in no time, especially in Africa. Recently, the country has seen our sports stars put up record-breaking performances in athletics, football, wrestling, basketball, combat sports, and some other sports. Despite recent successes recorded in sports, there have also been so many laws. You'll be deceived into thinking that uh, Nigeria has done very well because in actual fact, the nation has done very well within the African continent and we need to celebrate and commend that. When you take it to the global level, however, you begin to see gaps. You know, when you compare with Kenya, Ethiopia, Algeria and a few other countries, Nigeria is nowhere to be seen. Our sport in the last couple of decades has actually been on a slippery slope. And the reason this is so is because so far, of not being able to create systems to sustain the talents we've got or to create a better platform for the talents that we've got. I think Nigeria has been heavily reliant on natural talent. Right now, we are just living on past glory. We are people refer to us as the giant of Africa, but there's nothing to show about it. When you look at the level of our leagues, when you look at the level of competition we have in other sports, there's nothing to really write on my body. There is no denying the fact that there is an abundance of sports talents in the country but harnessing it has been a major issue. There has to be a conscientious plan on the part of government to invest in grassroots development of the game, to invest in grassroots programs, and also talking about infrastructure development. The way forward, it, of course, is tied to the problem, lack of system, building systems to absorb our talent. There is the need for organizations, agencies, individuals to come to play and get involved and develop the talent to help our country to achieve her potentials. The government cannot do it. You can't live, sports is too big for you to live in the hands of politicians. While the impact of the National Youth Games and Sports Festival cannot be overemphasized, sports enthusiasts call for more deliberate policies as Nigeria aims 
to be a powerhouse in sports. Getting to celebrate Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary through sports, I'm so in for it. All right, it's now time for us to talk about the women's senior national team talking about the Super Falcons of Nigeria and everything when it comes to women's football as the Nigeria under 17 girls are also getting ready uh, for the FIFA you know under 17 women's World Cup and we cannot wait to see what they are going to deliver there so if you know the drill it is now time for the MTN Super Falcons show with Osere Mene standing by to update us as always Osere what have you got today? It's a special Independence Day celebration and this episode of the MTN Super Falcons show is all about celebrations. Hi, my name is Jenny Payne, Everton FC and Nigeria Super Falcons player. I'm here to congratulate Nigeria on a happy Independence Day and a special shout out to MTN on this Memorial Day. Happy Independence Day to all Super Falcons fans and every Nigerian out there. Our dear country, Nigeria, is 64, 64 years of independence and growth. And also on the side, well, not necessarily on the side, as the Super Falcons are a major part of the show, a Super Falcon is also popping champagne as her club gifted her a new contract for her performance on the field. Gifted her. Do you have an idea already? Gifted, huh? Anyways, my name is Osere Me in and this is the MTN Super Falcon Show. As I always say, it is your one-stop shop for all things Super Falcons. I'm super excited today. It's Independence Day. It's Independence Day. I'm really excited. And this show promises to be exciting today as we will be celebrating with one of our own. We'll let you guys know who she is right after this break. Love amazing Nigerian movies, love out loud comedy skits, or gripping shows and series. Serve yourself all the drama, passion, betrayal, action, and laughs on YouTube with the YouTube Buffet Plan from MTN. Enjoy over 10 hours of YouTube streaming for just 500 naira and over 4 hours for 200 naira. Dial that 312 star 800 hash to activate now. YouTube, made for you. Welcome back. You're still locked on to the MTN Super Falcon Show. Thank you for sticking with us. Now, to get right into the mix of things, you know our Super Falcons, one thing they would always do is play well for both club and country. And one of our very own has done so well that her club is like, we are not letting you go. So just before the break, I was talking about one of our own who has done so well that she has been gifted with a new contract. I keep on mentioning gift, gifted, gift, gifted, because it is none other than our very own Monday gift. She has been rewarded by UD Tenerife of Spain with a new contract. Now, as you know, on the Super Falcon show, we'll bring you all the juice. We'll bring you all of the information that you need to know. So, we took a trip down to Spain and Monday Gifts gave us, rather, she shared with us some of the insights into this new contract. I am very grateful to God for this opportunity and I am so honored by my team for the extension of my contract and this makes me feel very happy. Pulls you straight down. I would like to say the club is a good team, a promising team. I'm proud of what they've achieved so far. Uh, I know there is more 
that can be achieved and I believe so much in that dream. For me, yeah, scoring goals have always been like a primary assignment. It makes me feel like a striker. Um, but there's something that is also important. It's giving out your best anytime you're being given the opportunity to play well. And what is a relief is when you score and then your team wins. <laughs> yeah. I am motivated. I started my first league game with a breeze. I have good technical crew that are always helping me to get better each day. I have the most fantastic teammates that always want the best for me, you know, giving me all the support that I needed. I have the fans cheering us from the stands, you know. And I have you guys, you guys watching me right now, pulling for me always. So I am motivated. It's always a privilege to be called upon to come and represent your country. And that is why I'm working so hard and so that when the opportunity is being given to me, I'll be ready and fit to go. When you want to get off the darkest ground. Randy Ward Rum is a good coach and he puts his player first. Well, I'm going to miss his personalities and his push for greatness. You should go further to see this too. There is not an area of concentration for me right now, so I have not been paying attention to whether or not they have a nickname for me. All I know is that some of them call me gift, while some call me Monday. I love you guys so much, and I always do my best to put smiles on your faces because you deserve it. Oh well, she did say scoring goals is like her primary assignment. And if there is one thing you can be sure of when Monday Gift is on the field of play is that she's going to score or at least provide an assist. Congratulations, Monday Gifts. We're rooting for you week in, week out, year through, season through. We're always here rooting for you and we wish you the very best at Tenerife. Now, you can go to our platforms and let us know what you think about Monday Gifts getting a contract renewal. Let us know at MTNNG on Instagram and X, MTN Nigeria on Facebook and YouTube, and of course, our very own pages across all social media platforms, Super Falcons Show. We would like to know what you think just generally about Monday Gifts, her style of play, her performance, and of course, the contract renewal. Now, in as much as I love your pretty faces, and I know you love mine as well, I've got to go. This is the much that we can take for today on the MTN Super Falcon show. Allow me to say once again, congratulations on 64 years, Nigeria. It only gets better from here on out. I'll see you in the very next episode. My name remains Osera Mare in Negmenebo. But just before I leave, remember that this show airs 9 a.m. every Tuesday on NTA. And thank you, of course, the guys making things happen behind the scenes. My producer, Tayo Ogunsheye, Big Jimmy, Body Olotu, and of course, Uche. And remember that if you also miss this show, not to worry, we have got you covered. You can always catch it on MTN's Ayoba app. Till I come your way in the very next episode. Toodles! <laughs>
the away teams won. And, you know, that's, you know, brought up lots of interesting things when it comes to the Nigeria Premier Football League. It's now, you know, getting interesting to see that, you know, matches have been won away, even more than home, uh, you know, home matches. And that's quite interesting. Also on Sunday, we saw the result of the match between our former master and his you know, apprentice. Uh, that was quite interesting, talking about Reverse United and Ayimba International. And that did end, you know, in favour of the former master, talking about Finit George. Reverse United won 2 0. Kano Pillars were shocked by Abia Warriors. 2 0 also it ended, while Remo Stars were able to record a 2 1 win over the you know, Rangers International, uh, you know, who visited them. And that was a clash between, you know, uh, two friends uh, talking about the two coaches, Ogumo Dede and Ile Chuku, which was quite interesting. So we had lots of interesting results. Even on Sunday, we had about three draws in the Nigeria Premier Football League. And quickly taking a look at the standings now, uh, Remo Stars are top after, you know, claiming four wins from four games. That's the 100% record. And they are being closely followed by Reverse United. You can see them there. Can you just see Niger Tornadoes? They are also there. Quite interesting to see even Casina United. Interesting. And down below, we're seeing Bayosa United again. Uh, Lobby Stars, what are they doing there? Uh, let's hope, you know, uh, okay, it's just four match days gone. We still have 34 more to go. So at the, end of, at the end of the day, the boys and the men will be separated. So let's see what happens out of that. All right. Uh, it's been quite interesting what we've seen in the MPFL so far. Uh, let's quickly show you one or two highlights. And after that, we get to talk more. Christmas promising for Rebel Stars and they've scored. Great move from the Sky Blue Stars. Lucky up the line. Beaten. Rebel Stars are in front. Because a chance for Rangers. He's gone down in the box. It is the equalizer. He's got a chance to hit this one long. A prima from Dutchman Michael. Restore the lead, Rebel Stars. It was a belter from. And it is two for Rivers United. Shea for Jackson, the youngster. On the ball on the top, on the ball in the strike. On the home side. I'm brought to this time. Who Friday? They've got a chance to double the lead here. Square for the Epa Jackson. On the turn, the left is right. And it is two for Rivers United. Shea for Jackson, the young star. All right, quite interesting. And uh, just like I said earlier, in fact, on match day three, the number of away wins that we had. I wouldn't know if it has ever been recorded in the history of the Nigeria Premier Football League. And, you know, since the beginning of the season, we've seen, you know, a, a high wave of, you know, away wins. And that really caught our attention. And we had to take on the chairman of the Nigeria Premier Football League, Benge Legbeleye, to tell us what's really happening in the league. Uh, something exciting is happening that teams are winning away from home. Well, very simple. The fact is that anyway, we're not, we're not, we're not dancing yet. We know we're improving. We have seen a standard of uh, officiating uh, getting much and much better. We've seen the league being better organised. Now you can see that any team can win anywhere. This idea of win at all costs at home is no longer there. So the syndrome of this home win at all costs is completely uh, erased in our football ecosystems in the Premier League, you need to play well to win matches. Imagine um, Sunshine Stars going to Aqua, to Uyo to beat Aqua United. Imagine National United leaving National War, going to Lagos to beat Ecology United. Imagine Ramon Stars going to beat Cano Pillars at home. Imagine 
even Platina is losing at home. So we have been having several teams going out there to defeat the teams that we think that are the most invisible in before. So the fact is that we are happy that the, the league is uh, quiet now what we want it to be, but the truth is we are not even yet where we want to be. So that's why I say we're not dancing yet. But we know we have improved, but we want to continue to improve. And Nigerians should trust us. We're going to give this country the best league that it is out. All right, quite interesting. We cannot wait to even see more of that in Nigeria. I want to believe that any team can go to any ground to get a win. So far, you're the better team and you know how to do your thing. All right, let's quickly move to England now and, of course, other parts of Europe and talk about all the interesting things that happened last weekend. In England, Manchester United were humiliated by sports in front of their home fans, talking about Tottenham at Old Trafford. Chelsea, they cannot stop winning. They won a 4-2 against Brighton. Manchester City were picked back by Newcastle. And, of course, you know, Arsenal had to grind that win against uh, Leicester City. Quite interesting, and of course, uh, we saw the Madrid derby between, between Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid in Spain. Quite interesting, Barcelona have been stopped. Uh, their unbeaten run has ended. So let's quickly see what, you know, is going to happen, you know, in other leagues and all that. Uh, so let's quickly see what happened in other leagues last weekend, including the Bundesliga, the Italian Serie A and the French Ligue 1. And of course, we had to show you the fixtures for the UEFA Champions League this week because we're going to see action, uh, you know, uh, on March day two uh, when it comes to the new league phase of the UEFA Champions League. We cannot wait. It will really, really be interesting. So many matchups to look forward to. All right. Just like I always say, sports role is never complete without bringing to you an aggregation of trending sports stories from all over the world. And of course, as always, Francisca Bile is standing by with the latest stories coming from the world of sports on Sports Tidbits. River State will host the 43rd edition of Federation of Public Service Games, FEBSGA, one of the biggest sporting events in the country, which attracts over 10,000 athletes, officials and dignitaries in the public service sector. National President Aloku Amebi disclosed that all is now set for the Games, with Governor Simina Fubara having given his final nod as member converged on the Moshuda Biola National Stadium Abuja for the September edition of FEBSGA Fitness Exercise in commemoration of Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary. We know that in Nigeria, sport is one of the strongest uniting factors we have. And sport goes into uh, making us better civil servants to be able to deliver on the mandate of the renewable agenda that we have been given. Sport also makes us mentally fit. The executive governor of River State, Sim Fobra, uh, for giving us the opportunity to hold this game once again uh, in River State. And we are promising that it's going to be an exciting and wonderful one. Meanwhile, in a bid to promote the Olympic value among student athletes, the Nigeria Olympic Committee, in collaboration with the International Olympic Committee, organized a two-day worship on the Olympic Value Education Program at the 11th FASU Games. Student athletes from various universities had the opportunity to be enlightened on the core values of the Olympic spirits. It's a program meant for athletes and officials to inculcate in them the value of Olympianism. 
so that uh, they can attend to humanity, they can attend to the values, the core values the Olympic movement generally have. To football now, head coach of the Nigeria Under-17 girls, Bankole Oluwokiri, has released his final 21-player squad for this year's FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup finals in the Dominican Republic. The list has three goalkeepers, seven defenders, four midfielders and seven forwards. Nigeria will compete in Group A of the 16-nation finals alongside host nation Dominican Republic, Ecuador and New Zealand. Finally, the World Anti-Doping Agency has appealed against the decision to clear Yannick Sinner after he twice tested positive for a banned substance. Sinner, twice a Grand Slam champion in 2024, tested positive in March for the anabolic steroid Glostebol after being cleared in August by an independent tribunal who determined he was not to be blamed. With sports tidbits, Francis Kabile. And in news. Many thanks, Francisca. And of course, with that, we've come to the end of this independence episode of Sports Real coming to you on NTA Network. And of course, we want to thank you for hanging out with us. Do not forget that you can get more sports content on NTA Sports 24, which is available on Star Times and Free TV. Until next time, I'll come to you just like I will always say, be yourself and always stay out of trouble. You don't need it for anything. I am Badi Adelaide and I will see you next time.